You might not care for game critic Jim Sterling's personality, but you should care about what's happening to him. It's a big deal. Digital Homicide, a small game developer based out of Arizona that you've probably never heard of, filed a $10 million lawsuit against him last week. If you're not up to date on this, here's what's going on. Digital Homicide's lawsuit filed in Arizona District Court and accuses Sterling of assault, libel, and slander. You can ignore the assault part, it's merely part of a broader category and legal speak that we're talking about here. Digital Homicide is focused on the other two, libel and slander. Specifically, they're arguing he falsely accused Digital Homicide and caused damage. They're saying this is to the tune of $10 million. Uh, there's a long, weird, and sordid history between Sterling and Digital Homicide. Uh, back in November 2014, Sterling published a 10-minute takedown of a game called Slaughtering Ground. He was not kind to the game, in fact, he tore it apart, which is part of Sterling's shtick on YouTube. He craps on bad games, and Slaughtering Ground was a bad game. This isn't in early access, by the way. This is a, a finished product, just thought I'd point that out. The, the word really was hilarious when they were describing this on the store page. Flawless. Hilarious. That's where it should have ended, but it didn't. The developers flipped out in the worst way possible and published two videos since taken down where they called Sterling a, quote, fucking idiot. In his playthrough, Sterling had mocked how the game pulled generic assets from various storefronts, resulting in a rather boring-looking game. The developer defended this as part of the cycle of cash flow that is the lifeblood of hardworking people in the indie community. In other words, to make the games at their budget, they couldn't justify a bunch of money on art. But more to the point, the developers were upset that Sterling was so harsh on their game, and pushed back on the notion that Sterling should be allowed to publish videos with reckless abandon. The developer successfully, though only temporarily, issued a DMCA takedown that was ultimately appealed. If you're unfamiliar, DMCA takedowns are, in theory, a tool for copyright holders to pull down infringing content on YouTube. What it's sometimes used for is to crush dissent and eliminate the cash flow for speech copyright holders might disagree with. Digital Homicide, when talking about the DMCA, claimed, The DMCA file is not to censor reviews. There are countless negative reviews posted, including multiple Sterling videos, and only one in particular with the DMCA filed on it. The reason we have a legitimate claim we can prove a violation of our copyright, fair use is not blanket immunity and damages. The typo there isn't mine, by the way. It's part of a since-deleted Steam post about why they issued the takedown. And remember, this is deleted alongside the videos they published, and are you noticing a pattern here? Digital Homicide also claimed that Sterling called Slaughtering Ground a worst game of 2014 contender and an absolute failure. That meant it was a unreasonable use of copyrighted material. Again, that was part of another Steam post that was pulled down. YouTube ruled against Digital Homicide eventually, but they probably knew that would happen. What was important was the video disappearing and depriving Sterling of money. Sterling and Digital Homicide eventually hopped on a Skype call together that can only be described as very long and very awkward. I'm glad you think ruining, well, what was ruining it? people's yeah. lives is funny. Anything you've done. I'm glad you think ruining people's lives is funny. The, what what a quality. Remember I think, earlier? I think you all uh, got up. Remember earlier when I said you were a terrible person? You just proved what I said. If the conversation was meant to hash things out, it didn't really work. Instead, it's just two people throwing pot shots at one another for nearly two hours. You can find better uses of time than listening to the whole thing for 90 minutes, as it's little more than one of the game's developers, Robert Romine, barbing with Sterling. But there is one very interesting line. That is why, one day, you're gonna have enough subscribers. You're going to make enough money on your Patreon thing, and somebody's going to get tired of your shit, and they're going to sue you. It's, I'm not saying we are. I'm saying somebody's going to have the money to do it, and they're going to win. Digital Homicide ended up being that developer, and that brings us to the lawsuit. What exactly is Digital Homicide accusing Sterling of? Technically, it's nine counts of what's called libel per se, which according to law.com is broadcast a written publication of a false statement about another which accuses him, her, of a crime, immoral acts, inability to perform his, her profession, having a loathsome disease like syphilis or dishonesty in business. In other words, lies. I'm not going to run down each and every one of Digital Homicide's accusations, as they're largely riffs on the same idea, but let's talk through three of them. 1. In September 2015, Sterling published a piece called Digital Homicide in the Case of the Sock Puppet Developers. Sterling took a closer look at some Digital Homicide games, including one called Galactic Hitman. Sterling noticed one of the art assets appeared to be taken from somewhere else, which he linked back to a Deviant Art page. The developer later claimed this came from an online media repository called Shutterstock, and in the lawsuit they produced a receipt. 
Sterling later changed the article wording to say it could have come from there. Two, Sterling investigated another company that seemed to be linked to digital homicide called ECC Games. If ECC Games was merely digital homicide operating under a different name, that could be viewed as disingenuous on digital homicide's part. Digital homicide's problem? Sterling's real name is Jim Stanton, so by decrying digital homicide for going under a different name and claiming that's deceptive, Sterling has, according to them, undercut his own argument. 3. Sterling discovered a Polish company called ECC Games, which had no connection to this other ECC Games. When contacted by Sterling, the Polish ECC Games said it was investigating legal options against the other ECC Games. By pointing out how Digital Homicide could be in legal trouble, Digital Homicide viewed that as suggesting they were up to something illegal. The rest of this list riffs on the same idea, including taking umbrage with an instance where Sterling compared the company to the wet bandits, the bumbling thieves from home alone. Other than $10.76 million in damages, as if that is not enough already, Digital Homicide also wants Sterling to place a public apology on the front of his YouTube page for at least five years. Let's cut to the heart of the matter. What Digital Homicide is trying to do here is chilling. It's using every legal avenue possible to squash speech. You can argue that Sterling is picking on low-hanging fruit. You can take issue with his shtick focusing on terrible video games. What we should all be able to agree upon, however, is that he has the right to say it. You can look at this lawsuit and go, well, of course it's ridiculous, but that doesn't mean Sterling won't have to spend real money and real time and real resources fighting it. Like the DMCA takedown, the point isn't to win, it's to get someone to shut up. Game over. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, that's awesome. I'm happy for you. There's tons of other stuff around here. You might have watched me die tomorrow. You might have watched me scream at horror games. You might have watched me react to trailers with my wife. You might have watched me share some of the coolest video games out there that you've never heard of. There's lots going on on the site. And YouTube, so that means what? You have, to, you have to like, you have to comment, you have to subscribe. All those things help the channel. All those things help me. And I really appreciate it if you become part of the community over here. Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in another one.